Hey, it's Jason Judy from Centric, and this is Centric Tech Episode 6. So today I'm going to show you my favorite trick in Ableton Live, which is how to use the IAC bus to automatically drop effects in or out of the mix, quantize to the beat while your hands are free to do anything else you want. Very, very cool technique to add some DJ style effects to a live electronic set. So to explain what exactly I mean by all this, I'm going to start up this clip and give you a quick demo first. So you got basic bass and drum loop going there. And then I'm going to go over to user one panel on the launch pad, which is what I'm going to use for this uh, demo here to show this technique. This button here on the launch pad, it sends a MIDI note message on channel five, and I've got that currently mapped in Ableton to trigger a lo-fi radio effect on or off. Pretty basic, um, just a manual trigger, which is also good to have in addition to the quantized trigger because sometimes you just feel like putting things in you know, really quickly. Just give a little flair to it. Um, and I've got a beat repeat down here doing the same thing. So that all works good and fine, but what if I wanted to do this kind of like remix live styling while playing an instrument at the same time? I've only got two hands, it starts to get a bit restrictive. So what I've done here is I've built in some quantized triggers that change the device states, quantized to the beat, so that when it gets back to the top of the measure, they change states. So I'll pop the metronome in here so you can get a feel for this on the beat grid. Two, three, four. So there you go. This button right here, it's sending the exact same message as this button. It changes the states of the device, but the difference is, is this one only sends its message when the quantized clip gets to the top of the measure. So very, very useful thing to add to your set. So let's go into Ableton and take a look at how exactly I'm pulling this off. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get your IAC bus up and running because that is what we're going to be doing or using to get the MIDI out of the system and back into the system to kind of fake trigger those things that we're using our hands to trigger. So you want to go to, I'll close this out here, audio MIDI setup on your Mac, and uh, this is a Mac only feature by the way, so no dice to the PC users here. Um, and then you click on this and you just check this box to make sure that the device is up and running. If you need any further uh, help on that, I'm sure there's a bunch of good tutorials online for the IAC bus. But for the sake of making this a pretty brief tutorial, let's jump right back to Ableton and make sure that the IAC bus is now being uh, recognized in Ableton. Okay, since we checked that box, it's now showing up here in your MIDI ports. You want the track port turned on, that will receive MIDI notes. You want the track out port turned on that will send MIDI notes on the IAC bus. So what this is basically doing is it's sending MIDI out of the computer on a virtual MIDI cable and bringing it right back into the computer in a loop. Uh, the difference is by the time it gets back to the computer, the computer thinks it's coming from a controller. So it can't tell the difference between IAC MIDI coming in and launch pad MIDI coming in that you're hitting with your fingers. So um, if you see here, um, toggling this device on and off. It's the same thing that you saw me pressing on the launch pad. It's just changing the state of the device from on to off. And I've done that very simply by just going into mini map mode, clicking on the device, and I've mapped those toggles to those two buttons that I was pressing on the launch pad. Very basic. Um, we're going to note here that this is channel 5B3 and channel 5G4. Those are the two notes that Ableton needs to receive from an open MIDI port in order to change the state of those devices. So theoretically, as long as Ableton receives those notes from any open port, those devices will also change. It doesn't have to come from the launch pad, even though I mapped them with the launch pad. The launch pad just says, use these notes on this channel. It doesn't say you have to use me all the time. It could be anything that sends those notes that changes those device states. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go and create some MIDI clips that send the same notes that the launch pad was sending. And therefore, you can have Ableton change states uh, automatically. So you create a brand new MIDI channel. Um, this is the one that I made for the lo-fi radio effect. And um, you set input to none. You send the MIDI out to IAC driver channel 5. And then same thing with the beat repeat, which is over here. So the next thing you want to do is you want to create a MIDI clip. 
Now what this clip is going to do is it's going to send that note that we just saw that was mapped to that device. We're going to send that exact note out into the IAC bus. So you click to make a new clip, and then you see I've put in here G4. G4 was what was mapped to that device. So G4 goes out into the IAC bus, it comes back into the IAC bus, and it toggles that device to change states. The important thing here, really the whole purpose of this whole thing, is the quantization. Now, if this is a quantized clip, the clip does not actually take action when you press it. It only takes action when it reaches its quantized state. So this is set to global, my global is set to one bar. So this clip is only gonna send that note out into the IAC bus when it gets to the top of one bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the uh, track again. Turn those off. Okay, metronome's going. So, you see there that it didn't actually fire until it reached the one again, same thing here. So, very basic, you know, Ableton 101 quantization of clips. So, I'm triggering them here, and that's firing the notes, which is gonna change that device state. Now, that's all good and perfect, but we don't wanna use the computer with the mouse, we wanna actually use the launch pad for everything so we can be more musical and more hands-on. So the next thing you want to do is you want to MIDI map these clips to a button. It could be any button, um, any button but the, the two we were using earlier for manual stuff. So you just click on the clip, map your buttons, and now you've got buttons that, do, that launch those clips in a quantize mode. So let me go back to the launch pad again, and I'll pick up my guitar so you can get kind of a feel for how this um, all comes into play for me and why it's so useful for my live performance. So you get the idea. Um, really, really useful way to add some very tight DJ style performance effects to your mix while you're working in live instrumentation with your hands completely free. You just need a you know a few seconds to kind of uh, trigger things and get them set up in between chords. So uh, one of my favorite techniques. Very fun to use. Anyway, uh, you can always check out my music at centricmusic.com and more tutorial videos on my Centric Video channel. Hope you enjoyed. If you got any questions, feel free to shoot me a note. Peace.